Welcome back to America's Forum. I'm J.D. Hayworth. A new report claims that the deadly 2012 attack on the American consulate in Benghazi could have been prevented if the United States hadn't helped arm al-Qaeda militias throughout Libya a year earlier. The report, published by the Citizens Commission on Benghazi, claims the United States government allowed arms to flow to al-Qaeda-linked militias who opposed Muammar Gaddafi. The commission says their rise to power led to the Benghazi attack in 2012. The group says Gaddafi wanted to step down from his presidency, but the U.S. refused to help with a peaceful exit. This commission also says the Benghazi attack was actually a failed kidnapping plot. They say Ambassador Chris Stevens was supposed to be captured and traded for the blind sheik, Omar Abdel Rahman, who was the mastermind behind the world trade bombing back in 1993. Obviously, this report has garnered a lot of attention. Here to talk about it, one of those responsible for the report from the Citizens Commission, Major General Paul Vallely. Paul, my old friend, welcome back to America's Forum. Thank you, J.D. Uh, General, a whole lot here, but as we unpack this, what are the revelations we really need to remember from your organization's new report? Well, first of all, uh, just in review, uh, we knew uh, well over a year ago that Congress wasn't moving forward fast enough to get to the, uh, the specifics of the why, when, and where of uh, Benghazi. And so uh, several of us retired. The military and CIA formed the uh, Citizens Commission. And uh, since that time, we've uh, been interviewing and analyzing all the intelligence data uh, that had to do with uh, the build-up to Benghazi the lack of a rescue operation, and then the cover-up uh, and basically deception and lying that has gone on uh, with certain administrative officials. Now, Paul, as we take a look at this, it's interesting what we're hearing from Foggy Bottom. Their Deputy Secretary of State, William Burns, promised Libya more U.S. help in the form of, quote, helping Libyans build their own security abilities. In your mind, is that a good idea, at least based on what you found out and released in your report? No, it's a horrible idea. Now, if you go back to what you stated on the initial question there, J.D., it was an arms deal gone bad. This arms deal was funded by Qatar, and basically it funded the uh, al-Qaeda, al-Nusra leadership of the opposition forces to Gaddafi who the United States government ended up supporting, just like we supported the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And so the, that whole foreign policy uh, was the debacle. And then, of course, tied in with the proposed uh, kidnapping of the ambassador for the blind sheikh. Now, even in my trip to Egypt, they know that even Al Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, had something to do with propagating uh, that attack uh, on our consulate. So... Uh, uh, why Congress has been able to get to this, we have a former civilian commission to do it, uh, to get the word out. Now we're trying to get John Boehner either to resign or to form a select committee to subpoena all of these people. We've got to get to the bottom of this uh, from the congressional standpoint. Why do you think the reticence on the part of Speaker Boehner to appoint a, a select committee on Benghazi? Well, we think in some way he knew about the arms uh, deal, and uh, he's complicit in some of the knowledge that the administration does not want to get out, uh, and we think he knows that, and he would be complicit in that. Now, that's the only reason we can think of it. Uh, Congressman Frank Wolf from uh, Virginia has been our lead uh, man over there. We have over 190 signatures uh, in Congress now for the select committee, but Boehner won't do it. Well, let me go to another aspect of this, and, and you amplified the concern about a, a, an arms for blind sheik kind of deal gone bad that, that was supposed to involve a kidnapping rather than the killing of our American ambassador. But I want to drill down a little bit following the attack and, uh, and the rescue mission that was never put together. I don't know if, if, if you made any formal findings, but we've heard a lot of back-channel buzz about General Carter Ham, who was tasked with, with going in there and, uh, and trying to get something done, and uh, an order to stand down 
from then Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. Is there anything to some of this back channel buzz that we've heard about for the past uh, several months? Well, as best we can track, uh, they don't call it a stand down order, uh, but uh, General Carter Ham, uh, even he uh, says, well, there was no stand down order. But on the other hand, JD, there was never any order to go forth and even attempt a rescue operation when we did have assets in the Mediterranean, and we had air assets, uh, at least we should have attempted that. Now, uh, Secretary Panetta and even uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff Densi said, well, we don't have it. We didn't have any assets in the area. Well, that was a lie. I mean, we're fighting over the Middle East now for all these years, and we don't have any assets in the Middle East that can be deployed as far as air or sea or even special operations. So we know they're lying and covering up. Paul, we're going to get back to the Middle East in a second, but I would be remiss if I did not touch on what is happening uh, with our old Cold War nemesis, now the Russian Federation. G what is happening in the Ukraine? We heard five people killed, government forces clashing with uh, pro-Russians. As you take a look at what is happening in the Ukraine, General Valley, what should be the role of the United States uh, in that region of the world? Well, first of all, uh, you know, with NATO, uh, supposedly uh, an organization of allies over there to support what's going on in that area, uh, we've been able to foster and put in 600 paratroopers uh, this week uh, uh, into uh, that area. But uh, Putin's playing hardball. He's trying to recreate and bring back a certain portion of the uh, Soviet Federation. With that, was taking down of Crimea. Now we see within the last week the Ukrainians actually are standing up and fighting off some of these pro-Russian elements uh, that are in the, within the borders of the Ukraine, but also uh, uh, um, in Crimea. So uh, this is going to get worse, uh, uh, J.D., but uh, basically Putin knows he can do whatever he wants to and get away with it. Well, let's come full circle, Paul Valley. You made mention of it briefly a little earlier. You are just back from Egypt. And, of course, uh, what has transpired there it seems to have run the gamut and leaves a lot of us in the United States flat-footed and confused. We heard about Mubarak being thrown out of power and how there was a so-called Arab Spring. We also saw physical attacks on some Western reporters there in Cairo as the unrest started. In the here and now, as you have returned from Egypt, what is the situation in that, na in that nation right now, Paul? Well, I met with uh, General Al Sisi for the second time. He's the new uh, leading candidate for the presidency. I also met with his replacement, the Minister of Defense, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Intelligence, and Minister of Tourism, and also uh, Ambassador Musa, who headed up uh, forming the new constitution. The elections are coming up next month. They're very positive. Uh, the military had to do what they had to do to uh, uh, prevent a civil unrest of 30-some million people who stood up and said, we don't want the Muslim Brotherhood in. They snookered us. And uh, that's when uh, the military stood by, and they love their military over there, by the way. It was not a military coup, uh, but the military was able to provide stability uh, as they put this interim government in, uh, which they have now. But they've rewritten their constitution. They're very positive. Uh, uh, they're, they're really upset with the United States, who supported the Muslim Brotherhood uh, over there, and uh, more so, I can't figure that out. And the fact that we cut off uh, the Apache and Apache spare parts and other airplane parts uh, that they need to fight uh, al-Qaeda uh, in uh, the Sinai uh, to support that treaty uh, with Israel. But uh, Egypt now also has a problem in one of the biggest training bases for al-Qaeda, which is Libya. Now, Paul, a, and I just think it needs to be amplified from your perspective, because during my days in Congress, we heard very good things about the Egyptian military, obviously a close relationship between many in our own armed forces and, and those in Egypt. So with the minute we have left, again, your assessment is that the military is really stepping in as a, as a caretaker. This is not a coup. It's a caretaker situation where soon there will be uh, where democracy will flourish with the writing of a new constitution. Do I have that right? That's correct. The constitution has been written and included farmers, young people. It's a wonderful constitution. I have a copy of it. 
uh, but I am so proud to see a country that was able to turn themselves around and not be snookered by the Muslim Brotherhood who would put themselves before the Egyptian people uh, as being an Egyptian, and uh, they upset the, uh, you know, a vast majority of the country, and they had to be replaced. Well, they are a model for, yeah, go ahead. Now, I was just going to thank you. We'll have to leave it there, but we appreciate what you're saying about this Constitution being a model and the Egyptian people through their military reclaiming control of their government. Major General Paul Vallely, we appreciate your time. So, when we come back, what's going on in Syria? The Syrian government using chemical weapons against its own people again? We'll have that story straight ahead. Stay tuned, there's more to come.